This is a video produced by Mr. MB3 in 2019 featuring the Woodbury Fire where there's a massive amount of UAP dragons swarming around and he go intentionally shows them to the viewer. Two of them are hovering stationary in the sky and he zooms in on one and then pans out from it so it draws your attention to it, the dragon right in the middle, and then he pans out. He throws it into inverted mode so the viewer can see the dragon zipping around all over the place. And this points to that thing that I was talking about, how these dragons could be equipped with sonic frequencies that extinguish these fires. I'm going to let you watch the first two or three minutes of this, and then I'll slow it down, but you won't need to. If you've got an eye for the dragons, you'll see them all over. May 1st, 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Welcome to summer, guys. Today is officially the first day of summer in the Northern Hemisphere. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Woodbury Fire burning 20 miles to the east of me. It's consumed now over 60,000 acres. Yesterday, I drove to the East Valley, or the Far East Valley, and I got a pretty good look at this wildfire burning up in the mountains. It's moving towards the north, towards Roosevelt Lake. They've got all kinds of advisories out for the area. No campfires. They're even telling people they can't smoke cigarettes outside. They would prefer that people smoke cigarettes inside. It's consumed now 66,000 acres. It's 42% contained. Here's a little video I did yesterday from about as close as I could get. I could have gotten a little bit closer, but I stopped because I had a pretty good view from this area right here. Here's the Woodbury Fire from June 20th. Reporting from Southeast Phoenix, looking at one of the biggest wildfires I think I've ever seen out here in this area. That's close. That's within 20 miles and getting closer. Burned over 50,000 acres. From what I understand, it's 41% contained right now. Nearly 900 firemen out there working on that. But there it is, it's visible from my house. It's visible when the wind is low. Earlier, just 30 minutes ago, it was real high up in the sky over there. Right over there. It was up in the air a little higher. You can see the wind has picked up a little bit, but at times you can see it really clear. It's been like that since June 8th, a little over 10 days. I'm going on two weeks now. But anyway, there's a look at the wildfire from Southeast Phoenix. That's the Woodbury Fire right over there. Thursday, June 20th. 5.30 p.m. 2019. There's a look at it yesterday and as you... Here I'm going to play it at 0.25%. You can see them zipping all over. There went three of them. A pack of three of them. There's a few going back the other direction. There's a few in the background hovering stationary. They're all over. And this is why he put it in inverted mode for you. Now it's not zooming in for me. Okay, here I'll just circle them if it'll let me do that. There's one here. There's one here. And there's one over here that are all stationary. And there's a bunch of them zipping in all different directions. I'll rewind it and pause it where those a pack of three or four of them are cruising across the screen right left to right. Link will be in the description of this video. Then he throws it in inverted mode. So you can see those things zipping around. He didn't throw it in inverted mode so you could see a smoke cloud. You can't even see that there went the pack of three of them moving left to right once again. You can't even see the smoke cloud when it's in inverted mode. So he's trying to show you these, but he's not going to say it because it's not for everyone to know. And I'm getting to the same place where I'm not going to share everything I experience with everyone. 
There went another pack of three of them along the top, left to right. And this is at quarter speed. There, he zoomed all the way in on one. And then he zooms out from it. He's doing that to show you what there is to see. And that's not just in a still frame, hovering, because it's a still frame. He shows you video of them hovering in place, like those that I cited. There's one right there. They got this new trick where every time you tap the screen, it throws it over to the advertisement. It's real dirty, low-down bullshit. There's one right there. As he zooms in, you can see it's staying there stationary. I'm not going to pause it. I'm not going to pause it and take screenshots and slow it down. Just watch it one more time. Notice that there's packs of two and three of them going back and forth across the screen. Along with all the singles. This is at quarter speed. There went three of them from left to right. There was another pack of them going from right to left. And another pack of them from right to left. They're zipping all over the screen. These are not bugs. These are the UAP dragons. That's why Mr. MB3 tried to show you them. There are those in the background stationary that I've already pointed out. In hover mode rather than bullet mode. That's why he throws it into inverted so that you might be able to see what are those things zipping around. He's not trying to show you a smoke cloud. There went three of them left to right. Here comes another pack from right to left. Right. That was another pack from left to right. There went a pack from right to left. And then at the end of this video, he shows you there went another pack from left to right. At the end of this video, he shows you something like a UAP dragon. A very clear image of it. Though there's different types and different shapes. He showed, there he is, zoomed in on one. So that you see, what the hell is that thing in the sky? And then he zooms out away from it. Mr. MB3 doesn't show you everything he knows. He doesn't tell you everything he knows. He knows this is a very delicate process, a very sophisticated process, trying to walk people between worlds. There's one next to the telephone pole over on the right. He's trying to give you increased exposure experiences without freaking you out and causing panic. And that's why he shows what there is to see for those that are capable of seeing it but for those that want to tune out and pretend they just saw bugs or something, he allows them to do that. He knows they're not ready yet, and he's not going to force them by drawing your attention to it and showing you the way I do. And maybe I should take, a, take his lead. Because I've come to a similar place where I know it's not right for me to show and tell you everything I've experienced recently. This is a little bit later in the video, and there's one here, oops, I kind of got off on that a little bit, and one here right above the mountain. The one over here is right in the center of that circle, the one over here is right in the center of that circle, just above the mountain. Like I said in the video that I did yesterday, the little report, um, that's one of the biggest I've ever seen by a long shot. That's the closest. I mean, that's right in our backyard. So pretty AM, and it was just billowing straight up in the air. That Here, there's two black dots. The one on the right is his cursor that will move in a moment. And the one on the left is a UAP dragon. It was around... 
o'clock, or I'm sorry, four o'clock in the afternoon, the day before. Here's an incredible. Here he's going to show you what's in the sky right. What's in the sky right here, and he zooms in on it, and it's clearly of intelligent design. I just noticed something else up here in this corner, and he shows you that this is a bird. It looks like a seagull or something. Let me stop this one here for just a second. This was a series of photographs. This is the first one sent in by John from Scotland. And in the photograph, he noticed something unusual. And I have to admit, it is super unusual. I don't claim to know what it is. I'm just going to share it with you guys. This here is a bird. This is what he noticed in the photograph that he could not identify, and neither could I. Here he gets in a little closer, and then he moves in a little closer in this second photo. And then in the third photograph, he's right up on top of this thing. I will leave this completely up to you guys to decide what that is. It certainly looks mechanical, definitely doesn't look like a bird. You saw a bird, in fact, in the first photograph that he shared right there. Looks like a bird right there. That, I have no idea what that is. I've never seen anything like that. And that photograph was taken by John over in Scotland. So great observation, John. I wish I could help you out and tell you what you saw there, but I have no clue. I've never seen anything even remotely close to that in the sky. And I've seen a lot of different things in the sky, but nothing even remotely close to that. So good observation, guys. Thanks for sharing. And don't This is a video where I took some screenshots from the Woodbury Fire video that we just watched and I zoom in on one of these dragons. There it is above the tree. And I continuously zoom in, take a screenshot, and run some contrast, and save that to my gallery. And then go into my gallery and grab that photo that I just zoomed into and ran contrast on, and I zoom in some more. There's the one next to the telephone pole. And I repeat this process over and over using only the adjustments that are in my gallery that allow me to adjust the lighting and contrast and shadows and saturation, etc. And I reveal what is clearly something of intelligent design. So here's the one that we were just zoomed in on, the one that we were just focused on. And then I run the contrast some more and zoom in some more and run some more contrast and zoom in some more. And it threw it into Ken Burns effect where it zooms in and out. I wish I could have just done a regular slideshow, which I can do now with the screen record feature. I didn't have it then. But this was the best I got, and I'll show you some of these images in a still format. But as you can see, there's some detail starting to arrive, starting to appear. The ridges along the right. And there becomes some very clear definition to this craft. And the detail that I'm able to extract here is phenomenal. I've explained it like a lock that has a trillion tumblers, an infinite amount of tumblers, and I was just tuned in in such a way that I could adjust the contrast, in such a way that it could reveal some of the details of the shape of this object that we're calling UAP dragons now. This was originally recorded in vertical video, that's why it's such a slim strip down the center, but I've taken some screenshots. And I'll show you with greater clarity what there is to see here. And I'll include the link in the description of this video where I ran the contrast and it throws it into Ken Burns effect. Clearly there's intelligent design there. So here's some of the images from that video where they're not moving around so the pixels don't distort as much. This is what the UAP dragons look like. And these dash. Oh. I'll draw your attention to these dashes right along here. There's other similar dashes, identical. And there's a better image of it coming up.
Notice the dashes also here and also down here. One, two, three, four, those dashes. With a different contrast added, you can see it even more clearly. And all the little tiny ridges. So this is the approximate shape of one of the designs. I'm sure there's many different designs of these tiny craft that are anti-gravitational. They don't need thrust. These are the ion thrusters that move them around, the plasma jets that they use. This is just a slightly different image. You may be able to see a little more clarity. Clearly something of intelligent design and people that want, oh, and there's some other dashes that I want to draw your attention to. So there's these that I already drew your attention to. And then there's these tiny micro ridges right here. And they also have a counterpart of very similar ridges in another image where they're replicated. I'm not seeing it right now. But all of this right here, these repeating patterns, pixels, it's just pixelating. That's not what we're seeing here. Pixels don't arrange themselves in such patterns. This is the closest image we have of these UAP dragons. They have fine detail in the shape of them that I was able to extract when I was totally tuned in, tapped in, and turned on, I was able to hit that combination just right in the lock with an infinite amount of tumblers through the adjustments of the color and contrast and shading and lighting. And that's what the UAP Dragon looks like. And finally, Latchkey Hustle for the win. This guy has next level captures of what he calls knot birds and knot clouds and uh, nutterflies different shapes of these craft I'm gonna let him put it in his own words I'll put the link in the description so you can subscribe to his channel if you're up for the shenanigans hey folks welcome back thanks again for joining us um, we're gonna pretty much just get to it uh, there's some cool stuff we captured this week and want to share with you uh, the last five or six minutes of this presentation does focus on the theme of mimicry because uh, it seems like uh, in my opinion there's some mimicry going on and it's uh, that in addition to speed and some frequency control uh, notions uh, together are allowing these uh, things to operate in plain sight right in front of our faces so anyway enjoy uh, please share with anyone else you think might enjoy it and like I always say feel free to comment so we can uh, talk through this and try to see what we can figure out talk to you on the other end thank you Starting with this orb coming down from the 12 o'clock uh, spot there, and there's a few things that dart around, and we'll check those out, but note toward the end, as this orb gets down to the bottom, how it changes in its intensity when it's flickering. It's really interesting. So you may have seen it, but this capture actually starts with this fast mover shooting from left to right across the screen there, um, and then we unpause it and can let it roll, and then the orb comes down and then another one comes from the bottom left right here and shoots up across it uh, and then another one comes in the opposite direction and shoots downwards towards it and then the orb sort of redirects starts that flickering business and then on the right side going from bottom to the top there's that here it is one more time uh, at real speed And before we move on to the next capture, uh, we slowed and zoomed in just to highlight that flickering that I was talking about earlier. 
whatever this thing is and whatever it's doing, it seems like it's generating or producing a ton of energy. You know, for those of you who are new to the channel or these videos um, or just you're not sure what you're looking at right now, I can understand why you would conclude that it's an insect of some sort. Um, but once you've seen these things moving at real speed and seen enough of them, you realize that this is something else. And we're going to touch on this concept of mimicry more thoroughly toward the end of this presentation. But this is an example. You know, this is not an accident that this resembles, generally resembles an insect, uh, especially when it's at real speed. Your brain just sort of tells you that's what it is. And I, don't, I think that's by design. This thing is only in two frames. And so I just screenshotted both of them. They, here they are. And it's included in this uh, presentation just because they're very fascinating and very fast and different looking. I don't know what those little balls or circle type things are, but I've seen them uh, on a few of these captures. I changed the contrast here for this initial view just so you can see what to look for. And then the rest of the coloration is normal. So we have this thing that comes and hits this V shape and you can't really see what it is. And then a more traditional fast mover shoots down from the one o'clock to the seven o'clock position there. But I mean, they're two totally different looking things. I mean, obviously I don't have any answers in terms of what these things are, but when I see something stop and change direction like that on a dime it just doesn't feel like it's anything i'm already aware of or learned about in any traditional sense this next one we have two things going on one thing sort of floating up at one rate and then something else does that My gut reaction just from watching that is that the larger, faster one is closer to the camera. And then, uh, but the slower one, uh, I suspect, is sharing space with that helicopter and probably uh, past the cockpit. And just to be clear, my interpretation of this footage is admittedly uh, speculative, you know, without triangulation, I and I understand that, but, you know, you can't triangulate everything in your life, and you, you can still interpret what you see, and that's, that's my interpretation. This isn't the most dynamic of captures ever, I get that, but I included it because of the color uh, of this thing. This brown-orange, rusty color is it's just recurrent. This is another one that to me looks like it's in between the helicopter and the camera, uh, but still moving exceptionally fast.
So yeah, um, this is another one that has that orange tint to it. But look at this. Uh, like I said, this is in front. And this one, to me, seems to have shared space with it. I think this one buzzed that helicopter. And this happens right before the more obvious one. It's just tougher to see. But if you go back and watch it now knowing, you'll see it. This isn't the smoothest of captures. I sort of botched it a little because it was a mid-zoom when this happened. But either way, I'm including it because it's very obvious that this white orb or whatever it is... Um, gets eclipsed by the rotors and by the tail end of the helicopter. In other words, the helicopter's in between that subject and the camera, and that's unquestionable. Yeah, so sometimes I hit record and then start to zoom in. And if the m most important part of the recording happens during that little uh, moment, you get wonky footage like this. This is also a good lesson, though, uh, for people who are into this or starting to get into this, is to look at all of your footage, even the very, very beginning and the very, very end because it only takes a nanosecond for something amazing to get captured, and it can happen at any point. Not a lot to say for this one. This one says it on its own. This one's interesting because from right to left we have a bird and from left to right we have a fast mover. Um, yeah, very fortunate capture. And what's interesting too is that they seem to be going through the same speed, but they're not. I'm going to show you now uh, the basis for that comment I just made about the speed. This bird gets almost halfway to the helicopter here, and I'm gonna pause it, halfway between the screen edge and the helicopter, and to the left, the fast mover isn't even on the screen yet. And now we hit play, let it roll, and you can see how much ground the fast mover uh, makes up to the point where when they're both about to go off screen, now they're essentially in the same position. You can also sort of ratify that general conclusion informally just by counting the number of frames they're in, and this is at 60 frames per second. At the outset, uh, I mentioned the concept of mimicry, and now we're gonna take a look at some evidence that seems to support the conclusion that these things, uh, in addition to speed uh, and the ability to control and modify their frequency uh, also have an ability much like a cuttlefish to uh, modify their uh, behavior and appearance in such a way that it causes us to mistake them for prosaic uh, subjects um, and items so yeah let's take a look at some of these this is something in our sky mimicking a cloud and that's why I call them not clouds uh, but they move at a tremendous uh, rate of speed uh, they seem to be under control and if you didn't happen to have one on camera to slow down and zoom in and really analyze your mind would see it and just presume that it was a cloud I mean you saw how fast that thing moved right and so even if you did happen to see it you might question whether you even saw anything at all um, 
So when something's moving this fast, and then it also happens to look just like everything else that's in the sky, uh, it's really easy to not be identified. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on these nutterflies. The one on the left buzzed me in early April 2024. The one on the right uh, is from a capture uh, that was posted in 2021 um, by a YouTuber in Australia. And obviously these things uh, are very similar. What's more important, though, is that they are not butterflies, and that's why I call them nutterflies, because they're not butterflies and they're nutty. But the speed that they move at is just incredible. But I feel like they hijack the coloration of a monarch butterfly. So if, uh, just like that fast knot cloud, if you happen to see something like that fly by, your brain will just tell you it must have been a butterfly, but clearly it's not is as I've said before, butterflies are bugs with gigantic wings. There's always a bug in the middle, a cylindrical bug. And in none of these nutterfly captures is there ever a cylindrical bug in the middle. These things are shaped more like manta rays. So like the knot clouds, these things are just mimicking something accepted and known and prosaic uh, to exist in plain sight. These things are like the kings of mimicry because people see these things and they say, oh, I saw wings, therefore it's an insect. They saw antenna, therefore it's an insect. The problem is these things don't fly or move like insects. Look at this. This thing's literally moving sideways through space and at this speed. So this thing's moving at this insane rate of speed uh, and it's moving sideways and there's absolutely nothing aerodynamic about this presentation um, at all. But because it looks like it has these funky wings and antenna, our minds are perfectly accepting of the conclusion that they're insects, despite the performance differences. To me, this is the most unsettling of all of these uh, incidents of mimicry. I thought, I myself thought that this was a bird. And then I looked at it more closely. And I'm like, not only is it a bird, it's a bald eagle, apparently, because of the coloration. Then I looked in and slowed it down more and realized, wait a minute, it's not really moving like a bird. And then I kept looking at it and thought, well, I don't see any feathers. Where's the plumage? And then I took screenshots of each of those eight or nine frames and started looking at it even more closely. And the closer and more I looked at it, the more problematic it became for me. Because one of the telltale signs of a bald eagle is the yellow beak and the yellow feet with the talons. And this thing doesn't have a beak. And all birds have beaks and all birds have feathers. So I decided to take another look at some of the other birds I've recorded and some eagles. And this is what those things look like. And this is footage that I captured. This isn't like from something downloaded. This is the same camera that caught that thing, caught these things. And all of these things, the beaks and the feathers are very clear. I mean, that's a bird. And so then I went online and I started looking because of the coloration of that thing. And then I also noticed not only is the yellow beak so prominent and the, you know, the plumage and the feathers, um, but the, the eyes are really close and small. And so then I went back and looked at this other thing again, and it became more problematic because not only is there no beak, but there seems to be some sort of eyeball that's in the wrong place. Um, and because of the way the light is hitting this with the sun, you should be able to see a beak. But look at that dark spot. That looks like a gigantic eye that is completely in the wrong place if that is supposed to be an eagle. And so thoroughly flustered and unsettled, I decided to look into this some more and do some research. And then lo and behold, look at this. Look what I found. So I found this uh, watching a video on the YouTube channel Deadeye Customs, uh, and the links for the video and the channel are in the description below. But look at this. And you know, 
he actually points out also that this capture, he's like, I don't know how this is a bird. It doesn't have feathers. And it's he, he's right. I mean, it's seemingly right. And what I saw, what jumped off the screen to me in looking at this capture was the proportions are way off. That and like the capture of my own, we just went over the lack of tail feathers, not just the lack of talons in the beak, but there's no tail feathers. They need tail feathers to fly. I mean, you know, so the point is, this is a thing. These are not birds. Not birds are a thing. In addition to knot clouds, nutterflies, and those weird bumblebees, now we have things in our skies that are pretending to be bald eagles, except that they lack feathers, they lack beaks and feet, they look like grappling hooks, and they look like they're doing some weird backstroke. They don't even look like they're flying correctly with appropriate wing structure. But they're moving fast enough that our human brains just play this association game and then write it off. And it's crazy. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, we thought there were some interesting captures this week. And, you know, the bald eagle, not bird situation um, is very odd. But, you know, and I didn't mention this. I suppose it could also be that uh, it's our own advanced technology and it's a, you know, a, a drone of some sort. It's a surveillance system and um, they're used uh, to operate in plain sight by, you know, mimicking wildlife, I guess. Um, I, I suppose that's an option. So I probably should have mentioned that, but, you know, the sense I got when I captured it and then slowed it down, the more I analyzed it and scrutinized it, um, there's nothing about that thing that's, that gave me a sense of technology that is our own. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, uh, please feel free to share it with other people. Um, and like I said, comment, uh, let us know what you think. And um, yeah, we can keep sort of open sourcing this and keep the dialogue going. And uh, maybe we can get more and more people looking up and questioning what they're seeing and uh, come up with some answers. So there you go. Uh, thanks again. Take care. See you on the next one. First out, shout out to Deadeye Customs. Looks like Latchkey Hustle is on the same wavelength. His link will be in the description. That's a channel I've mentioned many times. Regarding this guy, Latchkey Hustle, Custodian Files says that he holds a very prominent position within society, that he's very high up in the hierarchy, like he's chief of police or a high-ranking military officer or, or a doctor, or a lawyer, or a attorney general or some high-ranking position of status in society that if you knew the position that he holds, it would add credibility in your eyes to what it is he's saying because you know he is of a very sound mind and his position indicates qualities of character that eliminate the possibility that he's just a nut job. And uh, as far as the not bird, I don't know, I'm not... Not sure on that, but there was this thing out there called Birds Aren't Real. A quote-unquote conspiracy theory that I would say is probably COINTELPRO, counterintelligence propaganda, where they put out this nutty-ass idea that birds aren't real. You can Google it. It was a thing. People were saying that for a while, saying, no, they're spy drones, and they charge on the power lines, and birds aren't real. Well, one thing's for sure, birds are real. Re the fact that there may be drones out there mimicking birds doesn't mean that birds aren't real. But they put out this dumb shit so that when someone who does catch on, like Latchkey Hustle here and a very small group of other people that can see these things around us, you are then associated with those nut jobs who say that birds aren't real. Oh, I guess you think all birds are fake, huh? <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. That's how counterintelligence propaganda works. That whole birds aren't real idea 
movement notion was probably to cover for the reality that there are birds out there which are not real and there's video out there that kind of says oh they're making drones out of dead birds there's there's video out there of a bird floating midair and the military of the country some east asian country or whatever comes out with a giant long extended pole and tries to whack the bird out of the sky and then it floats off away from them so there is a reality a truth that is covered up and distorted and polluted and diluted with this nonsense about birds aren't real they're all spy drones that charge on the power lines well it turns out these uap dragons probably do charge on the power lines that's why they're so often filmed going parallel with the power line so that whole birds aren't real bs was counterintelligence propaganda to pollute the well, to poison the well, and the stream of consciousness that leads to the truth about these drones that mimic birds, that look like birds. These drones that look like insects. Surprised they haven't put out a counterintelligence propaganda narrative that says, insects aren't real, they're all spy drones. So that anyone who discovers that there are these drone-like objects that's performance completely eliminates the possibility that they're insects. They're moving 2,000 miles an hour sideways. So anyone that does discover there are these small craft that look like insects oftentimes, but they perform in ways that no insect possibly could. Ergo, there's no possibility that they are insects. If they would have put out an insects aren't real campaign, then people like me and Latchkey Hustle and Custodian Files would be lumped in with the nut jobs who start talking about this conspiracy theory that insects aren't real, just like birds aren't real. That's why that was put out there, a counterintelligence narrative to cover up the truth that resembles that BS propaganda, birds aren't real. No, I assure you, there are millions and millions of birds that are real. And there are other objects that look like birds that are not real there are other objects that look like insects that aren't really insects i shouldn't say they're not real they're not really birds they're not really insects anyway link will be in the description the link will be in the description to latchkey hustle he's also the guy that took the video of the thousand drone swarm the flock of dragons the record setting thousand dragon flock just the other day. Link will also be in the description to Custodian Files. He calls these things cloud tenders. Before I came across Custodian Files calling them dragons, he claims because he thought they were dragonflies seven years ago and that's why he calls them dragons, I suspect there. There may be other reasoning why he calls them dragons also. But maybe not. Maybe it's just purely that he thought they were dragonflies. Custodian Files calls them dragonflies, dragons. Dead Eye Customs calls them cloud tenders. And I haven't heard the... Oh, this guy, Latchkey, Latchkey Hustle, titled in one of his videos, NHI Drones, Non-Human Intelligence. That's his word for them. When we discover new things like this, we have to establish new vocabulary to describe what it is we're seeing. Because there is no word for this thing that I'm looking at. I gotta make up a word of my own. And when I titled my video plasma powered thunderbirds plasma powered thunderbird source video is the one where i show them hovering in the sky for the first 50 seconds and then throughout the rest of the video they're jutting through the screen occasionally here and there i called them plasma powered thunderbirds and it looks like i might have gotten lucky on that because according to custodian files these things that look like wings are actually plasma jets and if these things emit frequencies like ELF waves, extremely low frequencies, or VLF, very low frequencies, just like was demonstrated that can put out a fire by those kids at George Mason University who use a speaker, light a grease fire in the pan, and then point the speaker at the pan and the fire goes out, then these plasma-powered dragons could actually be considered Thunderbirds, because they emit a low, rumbling, extremely low frequency that extinguishes the fires. 
the fact that they were hovering above the fire, the Woodbury fire that Mr. MB3 showed us, shows that they are somehow associated with these fires. Whether they're the cause or the solution, I believe they're going to be a very prominent part of all of our experiences in the very near future. They're not going away. You're not going to be able to compartmentalize this and disassociate from it forever. Very soon, they're going to be known to everyone. The learning curve is a tough one. That's why Mr. MB3 shows you, but he doesn't rub your nose in it and force you to see it by pointing it out to you and explaining there's these little tiny drones hovering in our sky and we're powerless over them because we can't even see them. They could fly through you at 2,000 miles an hour like a bullet and there's millions and millions of them. No, he doesn't want to freak people out. He knows eventually everyone's going to know the truth about this. He's trying to gently, easily initiate you uh, incrementally giving you increased exposure experiences until eventually everyone's familiar enough with it that we just kind of gradually became aware of it and we all accept it and there was no dividing line between the day that we didn't know and the day that we did know. He's trying to smooth that transition out, Mr. MB3 does. That's why he shows you these things and even throws it into inverted mode so that you might be able to see it a little easier. But he's not going to point it out to you. He's going to let people themselves discover it as they become willing and able to see it. Because there's a psychological effect. We have a mental immune system where we attack foreign substances just like your biological immune system attacks foreign substances with antibodies and sees any foreign substance as the threat <clears throat> and as the enemy. We also have a mental immune system, and we attack any foreign substance similarly and see it as a threat and as an enemy to our self-image and our worldview, our cosmology, and our paradigm. And we are on the brink of a paradigm shift. That is what Greg Braden spoke of in his, mo in his videos titled, Awakening to Zero Point and Beyond Zero Point, The Collective Initiation. That is what we are going through, a collective initiation. I have been through an individual initiation. I have experienced things that no one else has, which alienates me from society. Much like a military guy who comes back home from combat and doesn't even talk to any of the people back here, the civilians, about what he did and the things he saw when he was out there on the battlefield, because they can't relate. He can't relate to them. They can't relate to him in these areas, so he just doesn't even discuss it with them. Similarly, I have experienced things that alienate me and make me unable to relate to people and make people unable to relate to me. Soon, that's going to change. I've been through an, an individual initiation. We are all going to go through the collective initiation, and it will create ego death. That is also the dark night of the soul. Ego death. To any initiation, they break you down and then build you back up, whether you're joining the military and they put you through boot camp to break you down and then build you back up, build up your self-image and your worldview after we break down your old self-image and worldview, show you who you're not, you little worm, you scumbag, as the drill sergeant breaks you like a horse. Once you're broken in your self-image and worldview, you're shown that you're not what you thought you were, are you, tough guy? Then you can be built back up as one of us, a Marine, or whatever the new group that you're joining. In a fraternity or a sorority, they call it Hell Week, where they haze the pledges. And some people have died during these hazings. Some places have made it illegal to do these hazings of the new pledges that are trying to get into a fraternity or a sorority. In a street gang, they jump you in, or beat you in, or sex you in if you're a woman to demoralize and humiliate and shame you and break your psyche. Essentially, like James True says, shaman have generally had some sort of psychic rape where they've been completely broken down. But that's a different terminology that I should probably steer clear of. My point is, we are going through the collective initiation, and we're all going to be shown that we're not what we thought we were. We're not top of the food chain. We're not alone here. There's someone else in the cage with us. And coming to understand that changes everything. 
everyone who's operating right now investing in their five-year plan in their retirement is investing in a world that no longer exists. A world where there's no such thing as plasma fire. Trees don't burn from the inside. The fact that there is plasma fire and trees are burning from the inside all around us would make everyone shift their retirement fund over to their bucket list real quick and it would bring the economy to a grinding halt. That's why it's a good thing that people are unaware of this. But there will come a time very soon where it's time to break it all down, the Great Reset. And everyone is going to be shown who they're not, which is who they thought they were. Their self-image and their worldview is going to be shattered. Their individual cosmology, shattered. Our collective paradigm, shattered. A near-death experience causes someone an ego death. Your ego is your self-image and your worldview. And that has to die. The end of the world, as you've always known it, is coming to an end. Mr. MB3 is trying to make that happen gently, not trying to traumatize you. But it is going to happen for everyone. So get ahead of the curve. Embrace this. Recognize that it is a reality you're not going to be able to escape or look away from or compartmentalize or disassociate from. You're going to have to incorporate this into your world. It is part of our reality. And our ability to choose to believe what we want to believe and disbelieve whatever we want to disbelieve is coming to an end real soon. <clears throat> Everyone is going to be forced to reconcile with a truth regardless of what they think or believe or choose to ignore. The truth is going to have its way with us and drop and hit us like a ton of bricks. And everyone who's been trying to run faster than the speed of truth is going to get a sonic boom like a plane that flies faster than the speed of sound. And then it slows back down below the speed of sound. And that buildup that was behind it hits like a sonic boom, like a thunder. Those people that have been trying to outrun go faster than the speed of truth and go about their day and busy, busy, pay attention to only what makes me money and pay no attention and spend no time looking at anything that, well, that doesn't pay. What, what good's that going to do? How's that going to pay my bills? How's that going to get me ahead in this world? It's going to get you ahead in the next world. This world is over. Get a clue. Get with the program or you're going to get left behind.